And hello, hello, welcome and welcome in. This is Manji. I've got a little PNG tuber model today. It's very simple. It's very simple. I just made that for a collab the other day. So I figured, hey, I'll just show it today over here. And I wanted to talk about the um, Legends of Runeterra rotation. I like that game a lot. Legends of Runeterra a lot. You know, it's changing now. Again, there's the second rotation happening at this moment. Uh, so you'll be able to see a bunch of stuff, you know. I just wanted to give my thoughts on stuff going uh, back into the meta, going out. It's going to be a bit longer, probably, so uh, bear with me. And, you know, maybe you'll like this. I don't know. Uh, let's start over here. Champion rotation. First of all, Fizz, Yumi, Vega, Heimerdinger are rotating out, and Lulu is rotating in. Personally, I find this good although i'm a bit sad about heimerdinger and vega being gone um so lulu being coming back in is something that i find cool because it's most of the time actually quite fun to play lulu the issue i have with lulu is that the support archetype has sometimes some elusive shenanigans going on, where it's just, you know, you get very big elusives, and there's not much to interact with, you know? But most of the time, support is actually pretty darn cool as a concept, as a idea. There's a bunch of cool effects, especially in Targon and in um, Bandal City, Ionia. No, not Bandal City, but like in uh, Noxus even, you know? There could be some good ideas there floating around and having Lulu back in should work pretty well. It's definitely not one of the most toxic archetypes, which in my opinion would be elusives. And by elusives, I mean uh, specifically Yumi. Yumi is a um, unit you just attach to your elusive to then make it grow bigger and bigger. And then once it levels, you know, once you've attacked three times with this unit that Yumi is attached to, it gains spell shield every round, which is very annoying as well. Um, it just didn't feel very interactive. It's like, you know, the whole point of Legends or Terra is sort of that you go back and forth and interact with enemy spells, etc. It never, f like, I tried to make Yumi stuff work, you know, but most of the time it just felt as if I was just cheesing the game, sort of, you know? And Fizz felt similarly oppressive, you know? You just, you know, play a spell on him that targets him. He plays a different cheap spell, like a warning shot or something like that, and suddenly your spell is gone. And he's elusive now, too, etc. Uh, Fizz just... I didn't enjoy Fizz too much. I'm glad that Lee Sin isn't in the game, or wasn't in the game, you know, anymore after the first rotation. Because, frankly, there was, like, this Spellslinger deck with Fizz and Lee Sin that was pretty darn annoying. Um, there's a bunch of very annoying decks involving Fizz or Yumi. A lot of times it's both. Vega being gone is sad because I love him. I love him. He's a very cute little mage and has some very good voice lines. I like a lot of his followers on the archetype he's in. Um, I did find, however, that Vega is pretty one dimensional. You just play for the darkness win con most of the time, you know, and play control, which some people find cringe, to be honest. But also, um, he's just very like he doesn't have many decks you know either you play darkness with senna so senna vega or you play darkness or, or vega with uh nora with like portals so you have the um darkness and other control stuff from the shadow isles for the sake of controlling the board and getting rid of enemies and then you've got nora for the portal to get to the late game where your darkness really shines or you get the portal win con. Most of the time it's like, you know, it's it just felt like you got basically just those two decks, you know, Senna Vega or Nora Vega. It didn't feel like there were many others. And Nora was in the in the case of Nora Vega, Nora was just there to provide a lot of blockers so that you can scale, you know. Heimerdinger being gone is also kind of sad because Heimerdinger was pretty fun. I don't know. 
Uh, the Heimerdinger J stack was boring to play against. I didn't like that too much. But the whole idea, concept with tech units and turrets and stuff like that, you know, was very nice. I would have loved it if um, Victor would have come back together with uh, Heimerdinger. Like, maybe that could have been a thing, but I guess not. It's fine. Uh, moving on. Uh, Fizz is gone. Nami, I'm sad that Nami's gone. With a lot of the elusive, the, uh, a lot of, like, Nami's stuff isn't as strong anymore. As, she doesn't see much play. She didn't see much play. So, Nami's uh, thought it was sort of these elusive decks and buffing them up and everything. And I've been experimenting with, like, Nami decks that are just kind of more spell slinger based, you know, buff your board but don't necessarily play for a swarm, but more for a, I don't know, one big unit or etc. You know, so interact with the enemy. Don't just flood the board. But that's just kind of what it came down to most of the time. You know, it's just you, to make use of Nami, you just flood the board and then play a lot of spells. And you play a lot of spells that generate either more spells or you generate followers. I believe the ban of the Teltor the tail stones are gone, so that sucks for Nami. Uh, rotating her is okay. I don't think it's too bad. It's just, you know, kind of sad. I would have loved to see her, especially because of Gangplank, uh, Gangplank who's coming in. Um, it's going to be interesting if Sedge, Sedge stays. Uh, this, by the way, came out like two weeks ago or something like that, but I only just got to see it. But it's like coming in effect next week. Pike gone. Um... Lurk is cool, honestly, and there are some fun decks with Pike that don't involve just Lurk, but honestly, if you don't play Pike and Rek'Sai together, you're doing something wrong most of the time. It's just more effective to play that. It's a shame that um, we don't get other Lurkers, you know, like a, I don't know, Shurima Lurker. <laughs> well, we got Shurima Lurker already, never mind. Um, I don't like a Freljord Lurker or... Uh, like a um, Ionia Lurker or something like that. That could be cool. Like, I genuinely think that a Runeterra Lurker, for instance, as well, like Fiddlesticks could be a fun idea. Or, um, I don't know, Shadow Isles Lurker. Um, turn Nocturne into a Lurker with, like, fearsome level-up condition, but he has Lurk as well now. That could be, like, a very cool idea in my opinion and it's a shame that lurk is getting rotated i'd imagine that rexa also gets rotated if pike is getting rotated gangplank honestly plunder is cool uh pirate plunder was kind of fun um it's going to be interesting to see if it makes a comeback um champion rotation and demacia fiora is coming back <laughs> fiora was pretty toxic a while ago with like the whole um uh, undying and stuff like that like granting it the effect where you can't die or get killed or anything like that but that said maybe there is something here to be done with like support etc as an archetype together with yora maybe some of those cards get rotated javan was just a solid unit most of the time you just played it in any demacia deck you know and then you had like free attacks and stuff like that. It just was a very good unit. I never felt like I was playing Jarvan for the win con, for the level up condition or the level up or anything like that. Most of the time I was just playing Jarvan because it challenges the strongest unit and then my other units can attack better. Um, Lucian was kind of hard to pull off most of the time because either he dies himself or he just you know, doesn't do anything, you know, he's a one mana 2-1 champion with quick attack that gets double attack but not overwhelm, you know, I don't know, and he rallies, you know, he's a rally machine, which is cool, but Demacia has so many rallies already, you know, and also, like, you know, you wouldn't play Lucian anyway, so most of the time you would just play any other champion, like, uh, like you would play Jarvan, you would play Ergan, uh, Morgana is just stronger, and stuff like that. I feel like Lucian was kind of falling behind. That said, Quinn gone is... Honestly, most of the time I just felt like scouts were annoying to deal with. I never felt like it was that great. Like, Quinn didn't even seem too great, in my opinion. Like, too great to play against, rather. Um, I'm sure she's plenty fun, especially with Misfortune. But I don't know if I saw any other deck with Quinn, aside from... Quinn Misfortune, you know? 
So basically, you know, the free attacking, you know, with Cataclysm on a scout unit was really toxic. I didn't like that interaction too much, but aside from that, you know, seeing her gone is kind of, yeah, uh, it's a shame. Uh, Fiora back in is weird, but it's an alternate win con, you know, that's pretty nice. In the same vein that Jalvin was an alternate win con, I guess, but Fiora is just cooler, I guess, but different. Uh, Braum is coming back is pretty cool. I like the idea that I would love to see a, a standard Braum Poro King deck of sorts. That could be kind of fun without Warden. Uh, Sejuani is getting rotated. Makes sense since Gangplank is coming back. Those two together would be way too strong. Udia, honestly, I get it. I love the Udia playstyle. It's just that... It's also, especially for middle bolts, giving them regeneration when they shouldn't have access to regeneration is pretty rough. And also, you most of the time just played Udia because he's a 5-mana five 5-5 five five in Freljord, you know? Like, it didn't feel as if you didn't even need to play around stances too much. And you had Bethany and stuff like that, so you could level Udia super fast. And he was a win con and everything. But most of the time, he didn't do much outside of just you play big beefy dudes, you know? In the same vein, Trinomy is boring as heck. You would just play um, Ramp in Freljord and stall the game until you get War Mothers to play Trinomy to get Trinomy. And Trinomy would be just be an 8-6 Overwhelm that gets fearsome and tough on level up, turns into a 9-9, and it's just annoying to deal with because you need to obliterate him or recall him or freeze him or something like that, you know? He would just be a threat to you, but it was boring to play around him, you know, especially with, like, Battle Fury. So seeing him gone is pretty good. Uh, most of the time you would just, either way, you just, if, most of the time you would just take Trinomir and put him into any failure dig because he's just good, you know, as a one-off or something like that. Uh, Ionia, Yasuo is coming back. Interesting. I like the idea of that. Um, Yasuo was kind of fun. Uh, his level up is kind of a downgrade, <laughs> because uh, suddenly he doesn't deal damage to stuff, he just strikes it, you know? Meaning that if you freeze him, he no, no, no longer does anything. But either way, he was like, uh, Yasuo is super edgy. I like him in Runeterra, I don't like him in League. Um, Ari gone, which is fair. Ari doesn't get played much, Ari doesn't do much. When she does stuff, it's just elusive shenanigans. Zed is also pretty annoying. Um, when he does stuff, it's mostly elusive or ephemeral shenanigans with sharks and stuff like that. It can, can become toxic pretty quickly because it just feels like Ionia aggro, sort of. But also, um, Zed just never felt like to... I don't know. If I played against any Zed deck, it most of the time just felt boring to play against because it's like not exactly rewarding. Karma being gone is pretty great, honestly. I feel like her doubling up stuff was pretty toxic for quite a while now. I'm surprised she got, didn't get rotated sooner though. Uh, but yeah, solid stuff. Glad to see it. Uh, Riven gone, that's sad. That's actually really sad. Um, I liked the Riven archetype and stuff and it lended itself quite a lot to a bunch of different diff uh, decks. Like, a while ago, we had Rumble with Riven, we had Victor with Riven, um, Riven and Gwen. Um, aside from that, you know, I think Riven and Ash was a thing as well for a while, and with Morgana, or Riven Morgana, you know, you target a lot of stuff, so it makes sense with Morgana, and there's a bunch of cool things you can do with it, and it feels like you're actually playing creatively around the stuff you get from Reforge. So that's... it's a shame. But it's good to, uh, um, you know, maybe it makes room for other stuff that is interesting. Darius was just overwhelmed and annoying to deal with. Honestly, I never felt like it was too rewarding to play Darius or to play against him. He didn't feel like he did much, to be fair. Because he's like, when he levels up, he's just a big, beefy dude with Overwhelm, and that's it. That's his text. He has no effect whatsoever. Very basic. And even Garen, like, felt more rewarding to play, and Garen is literally uh, just, you play the elites on curve, you know? LeBlanc being gone is honestly fine. Um, I didn't like the... I mean, I did like Reputation as a concept, but it never got used as Reputation. It was just used as you 
take a bunch of big dudes with five attack and just play them on curve kind of you know it never felt like you did much outside of that the mimic spell was pretty darn nice but it's a shame that it you know like she's just she feels less like the law accurate leblanc you know she's less of a deceiver and trickster and someone that pl pulls the strings from uh, you know behind the curtain and everything you know she's just someone that quick attacks <laughs> um with a lot of big beefy dudes you know so honestly i hope they kind of change her would have been lovely vladimir coming back is interesting because vladimir is pretty darn cool <laughs> it's a very interesting archetype i want to see what they make do with him uh seraphin gone honestly good riddance I feel like the RNG she provided was pretty bad a lot of the times. A lot of the times it just didn't feel great to play against Seraphim because she would generate some random spell and it would blow you out. Because with the region um, mechanic and stuff like that, you can only, you only, if you know all the cards, even if you don't know all the cards, but just the meta cards or standard cards, uh, Seraphim would have a new card in the deck that just wasn't there before that gets doubled later on and that also um you know it's just annoying to deal with not to mention that seraphine with like seraphine with like updrafted cards and stuff would double up new spells that are just not that weren't too cost for instance or even big spells like treasures if you play her i played her a bunch with the mirai, mirai great mother and that was pretty fun, but also felt kind of toxic at times, you know? Um, but yeah, um, shame about Heimerdinger. Vi coming back is cool. I'd imagine that Vi would have been amazing with Riven or LeBlanc. Um, I wonder if Vladimir could synergize kind of well with Vi and Skargrans, maybe. That could be like an interesting thing to do but i don't know pilgrim feels always like the printer region and i love that you know i love it for that but vi is an interesting one especially because on a level up whenever she strikes she deals five damage to the or was it attack strike i'm not sure but like five damage to the enemy nexus which is also interesting it's an alternate win con oh shadow isles my beloved akram coming back is interesting but i also didn't like um Hecram a lot. I wonder if we could play She Who Wonders. Um, no. I mean, yeah, I think She Who, the one that, you know, gets buffed when stuff dies together with Hecram. Could be fun again, you know, because I played that a bunch. I'm not sure if that's still rotated, though, or if it's ever rot been rotated. Fresh coming back is also interesting. Senna and Lucian being gone, though, with Fresh. In the game, that's sad. There's like an interaction you don't see much. <laughs> no voice lines and everything. Vegas and Senna gone. Senna just felt like, you know, Senna was played mostly for either Senna Vega or for Fastigate. I haven't really seen many other decks with Senna, aside from that one Targon deck that, um, um, what was his name? Legend. Legend made. Legend made a deck that was basically took a lot of slower spells from Targon and sped them up with um, Senna. <laughs> so, for instance, the um, Starfall or whatever, you know, the two mana something that deals, uh, two mana slow spell that deals four damage to a unit that is stunned or that has attacked. Yeah, that works when the attack is cute. So on fast speed, it just deals four damage to a unit um, that isn't even done attacking yet. It's just prepared to attack. So that was pretty fun. Fastigate, aka Santa Nasus, was also pretty darn fun. I loved it, honestly. It was just a fun idea, fun mechanic, etc. Um, Nocturne, didn't see much play. Didn't really like it, honestly. I played it a bit with spiders, which was kind of fun, but also stopped playing it really quickly. Callista, I loved Callista. I still love Callista. She's so hard to level up, honestly. But at the same time, um I'm like 
it was great when she did level up because you could just print a lot of cool things, you know? Including the Rekindler, which would give you new champions that have died this round and stuff like that. Um, sad to see her go. Off we go. Action gone, that's great. Action just fell, like, you know, not, like, first of all, there's, like, the infinite stuff, you know? Ugh. Thank god, that's good. Away. Uh, second of all, you just played action as a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two with a quick attack, put the swinging glaive on top of him and just attack, and you couldn't really do much against that. It was very annoying to deal with, and even if you did, like, uh, manage to deal, do like, use quicksand on him, or freeze him, or, uh, not freeze him, but, like, I don't know, some have survived, make you unit survive, and the action takes damage, you know? They got, like, a, uh, lucky find through that. Could buff up the action, give it spell sheet challenger, give it stats, etc. Um, not a great time, honestly. Really didn't like that much, you know. Rek'Sai gone because of Lurk makes sense. Rek'Sai didn't see much play outside of Lurk whatsoever, so it's a shame that they couldn't like make some changes to Lurk or add new cards that kind of give Lurk to I don't know elites or uh, like something like that you know make lurk viable for something like that maybe make lurk viable with units that are just three or less mana unless they have a lurk you know whatever that could be kind of funny i don't know Renekton gone is weird because Renekton is pretty fun i don't know he's like a solid unit but also was like interesting for the ideas that you could put into the deck you know if you didn't play mono Shurima, you played Renekton for um, you know, the stat line and everything of the effect, but also you having like a challenging or vulnerable archetype, you know, get, opened up the game to a lot of like different ideas. So if you're coming back is interesting. Uh, LeBlanc is gone. Action is gone. It's going to be good to see where she uh, goes. Maybe Sivia Ash is, might be a thing. We'll see, I guess. Um, Diana gone. That's fair. Nightfall wasn't like too big. Yumi gone. That's great. Pantheon is gone. That's honestly, I'm happy about that because Pantheon was just a 4 mana 3 2 with Fated, who when leveled, and most of the time he just came down as a unit that was already leveled. Um, he just was key of word soup. You know, it didn't feel great to play against Pantheon. Most of the time he just rolled like, oh, look, he's got Elusive and Lifesteal and spell shield and everything you know and with stuff like i don't know when st with stuff like deathless in the game as well and brash fearsome and quick attack and overwhelm i don't know it's just not a fun time to play against kale honestly great champion sad to see her go i wonder why they went through the effort of removing her i mean she's not removed she's an eternal but you know Aphelia's back is pretty fun. I like that. Tarek back. Oh, that's great. I love the effect, you know, and he was playable in a lot of different decks outside of Shen Tarek or Tarek and Lulu. So it's good to see him back. Um, I'm looking forward to playing some more Tarek. Bard gone. Bard is my favorite champion alongside Nora. Seeing him gone is sad. Um, more recently, I played a deck that I titled Morda My Dooley, which is just Mordekaiser and Bard, and you would print My Dooley, which was a lot of fun. Rise gone? That's fair. He basically just has one deck, and that deck isn't great. Um, Varus gone? Fair. It's like a spell slinging deck, but with extra steps, and wasn't amazing. Didn't see much of Varus, you know? Um, Kane and Aatrox gone. I feel like Aatrox was pretty great in a lot of ways, especially with the sustain that was added and the world ender and everything. But what was kind of, you know, Aatrox and Kane had like very, very interesting origins that limited your card pool quite a bunch. And the way they worked together was interesting, but also made it very like possible to like 
you didn't get any random spells or whatever, you know, you just got very, very cool units in your deck or cool effects. You could play Kane with other decks as well, like with Freljot, I believe, and Aatrox had some cool decks as well with Demacia and other stuff. Sad to see it go. And uh, there we go. We're back again over here. With that said, cards that will be rotated. Uh, Rune Terran. Yeah. Um, right. So, Bandol City. I love Bandol City a lot as a region. Um, shame to see some of them gone. Tailstone's gone. Oof. Means, however, that I believe Conch can't get it. A lot of the cheap removal being gone is a buff for Conch, as long as Conch stays in the game. Uh, Shark Trainer, nobody cares. I don't think... Trixie Tentacles was pretty fun to play with Piltover when you printed it and made the opponent discard a lot of their hand. <laughs> um, it was kind of toxic with Early Bird and Trixie Tentacles, but I really enjoyed it, honestly. Trinket Trade gone is sad, but also... Um, I don't know, the effect was... You know... Was a, you use it, you get an Otopus, you play the Otopus, you get one mana back, the Otopus gives you a prank. It, you know. Bit convoluted. On top of that, you know, either Otopus or one of two spells from your region that costs three or less. It is a lot, you know. It's very convoluted. Again, Conch seemed better. It's just better. Most of the time when I play Trinket Trade, I've mostly played it for the Autopus and Pranks and stuff, for some funny archetypes and stuff like that. Uh, Treasure Trash, I'm sad to see it go. It was fun to use. Uh, fill your hand with random cards, they cost zero and are fleeting. You can only play three more cards this round. Was so zany and fun and weird, you know? I loved it. Sad that it's gone. And it was balanced as well. It's like, you use 10 mana, slow speed, to, and you have to have like space in your hand, by the way, as well, to get a shitload of cards that are all fleeting, so you have to play them immediately. And you can only play three of those cards, so you have to really think about what you use, what you do to really bring out the um, best from that. Uh, makes sense. Darkness is gone, gone, gone. Yordles in arms, it's just for swarms. I'm glad it's gone, you know. Give allies plus two plus two this round. If you've played cards from four regions, give allies plus three plus three instead. It's just give, but it can end games. It wasn't played much, to be fair, but it was still annoying when you did see it, especially in, like, decks with Poppy. Poppy is, however, still rotated, luckily. Quicken, gone, is a buff for conch. Means you don't get this, you, this card in your card pool. You can get a lot of the better ones. Group shot. Gone. That's bad for Bandle City because you don't have like it was cheap removal, you know, one mana to deal to because most of the time you did swarm the board quite a lot. Um, it's sad to see it go, but you know, it's fine. It will narrow down what Bandle City is actually about. Um, Yordle's Yordle Portal is pretty cool. I like it. Um, sad it's gone. Fey eight. Honestly, Fey archetypes, I never could make them actually work, so it's whatever. Bird was actually pretty great outside of Bard's de uh, Bard deck. Bard deck, so seeing him gone, it makes sense because he's like, you know, he's a chime card and stuff, but a 1 mana 2 1 that also buffs a, one of your cards, possibly, you know, is pretty good. It's, Blooming Cultist gone. It's fair. I don't like it. It was like elusive most of the time. It was just elusive. Mega Pulverizer gone. Um, honestly, fine. Because again, putting this on an elusive unit like Nora and stuff like that made it toxic. Paper Tree, sad to see it go. It was a very interesting um, synergy between a landmark and an equipment or attach itself. But with attach being gone, you know, whatever. Once you've equipped an ally, this game I cost two less. Grow an ally to four for this round. Honestly, never seen this card. I didn't know it existed. <laughs> um, drop a bomb gone is sad. Actually, very sad. And that was it. Honestly, a bunch of bangers gone, but I feel like Bandle City is still pretty good. 
I like I like Benos still. I want to see what they'll add into the game later. Uh, Shell Shocker Gone is pretty big for Bilge Water. You play this, you get basically a free unit because you play it on turn one. It's a two mana one, uh, two one, well, one mana two one, but you get because of a tune you get one spell mana bank. So it's basically as if you had just passed, uh, except you've got a blocker now, and most of the time you could just use the uh, grand. Um, allies or a unit one plus one plus one or give it plus one plus one, you know, you could play that immediately and it would be a free two for one mana on turn one, which was pretty bad. Uh, well, pretty bad. Most of it. it felt a bit oppressive, a bit annoying. I don't know. It's it's good at its back, uh, that it's rotated, but it is a big blow to Bilge Water, I think. Uh, Beast Below. Honestly, I loved Sea Monster deck, so but even then I wouldn't really run it. It would get generated by Joel Hunters though, but now that it's rotated, it means that Joel Hunters won't generate it. So that's pretty nice. Jailbreak on? Huh. Um it's a fun card because it's a random one cost follower, but also most of the time, you know, you just played other stuff anyways. Playful Trickster, I'm glad the rally is gone. Um Yeah. Uh, Riptide, shame to see it go. It was fun sometimes, but we still have it as Nautilus, a champion spell, because Nautilus is still in the game. Buru Cultist, fair. I feel like it just didn't, the burn didn't feel great for Cultists. Like, I, I never understood why Cultist, or like, um, I think that's like Kane deck, you know, the Kane decks had uh, uh, access to just burn. It makes sense in Bolt, uh, Bilge Water, but hey. Whatever, it's gone. Um, unending wave. Once you equipped an ally this game, it costs two less. Draw two and grant him fleeting. I didn't know it existed. I feel like nobody played it. Is that Mordekaiser? Whatever. Eye of Nakagoboros is huge. This is sad. I get it. Like most of the time, you wouldn't play it in like decks because you had Nila and Slipstreams, which are just as good. But this over here, you know. It's a big blow for Ilawi. I hope they revert Ilawi or change something. Like, change some stuff, you know, about her, maybe. Swindle gone is good riddance. I hated that card. Uh, Bilge Water Tailstone's gone. Brutal Leader. It's a bit sad, especially because I like the interaction with Tentacles. Joining Sandhopper. Honestly, basically two mana for free. Abin, it's fine. With with Dami gone, it makes sense. This is gone too. Shelly gone is great. I hated that card. Uh, lurk, 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 lurk. Monkey business. With Gangplank back in the game, it makes sense. This one's uh, away. Boomship, nobody cares. Verbal fish, gone as well. Good riddance. Powder pandemonium. It was a very fun card. It makes sense that it's gone. Um, yeah, Pull Shark gone is interesting, uh, more powder, coral creatures gone, random one cost spell from your regions, I'm glad it's like, generation is, it's still like in Banal City, but not in every other one, Siren, oh, Razor Scale Hunter, but look, we got Misfortune, on a ship, on a boat, why is she ba away? <laughs> I feel like, I feel like, you know, we shouldn't take away her boat. Uh, Razor Scale Hunter gone. Honestly, you know, with Scout being gone, you know, it makes sense. Double Trouble, Chumber Water, Scrap Shot, um, Scout. There we go, it was Bilge Water. Um, I'm glad that a lot of the elusive stuff is gone, the, uh, Powder Monkeys is a bit sad, but also I get it. I of Nakagoboros is big. I loved playing um, this deck with Ilawi and Nora, and really enjoyed having Eye of access to Eye of Nakagoboros in particular, you know? So it's a shame to see that go. Um, this one, I haven't really seen it played at all. <laughs> but most of the time I also play like Shadow Isles and stuff, so I never cared much about it. Um. It is what it is. 
For the Fallen. I didn't really see it much, played much. Scout gone. This one with Fiora is pretty darn big. Um, sad to see it go because it's kind of funny. As a card, it's kind of bad, you know, it's not optimal. Eight mana to do something that can be countered by deny, recall, transform, silence, um, obliterate. What else? Yeah, that's basically it, you know? It was balanced for the most part. Like, a lot of sh uh, different regions had, like, access to cards to deal with it. So, you know. Rally gone, that's great. Detain gone. I haven't really seen much use out of Capture. But I did play for a while this uh, deck with Bandle, um, Bandle Demacia, where I captured stuff and then silenced the unit that captured the unit. Which was pretty funny. <laughs> With Purify and stuff like that. Uh, Vanguard Cavalry. It's an elite. 5-5. Five, five for 5 mana. We're in tough. Basically 5-6, essentially. An elite. Um, I slotted this sometimes into the, uh, the elite decks, but I never actually played it all that often, you know? There's other cards that you just play instead. Like Garen, right? Remembrance. Gone. Interesting. Senna gone, again. Mage Seeker Jr. gone. That's fair. It didn't really, like, it was mostly there to counter, like, Seraphine, I believe, and Bandle City for the most part, I think. I haven't really seen it do much else. And, like, coins as well. But, like, it didn't see much of a play, I don't think. Um... Pick a follower equipment from the top four cards of your deck, draw it, place the rest into your deck. Have never seen this played. <laughs> I didn't know it existed. Champion Strength, gone. That's fair. I don't think it was great to have that in the game. I'm glad it no longer gave Scout, but it was still not amazing, you know? Um, and it's not Grant anymore either. I think it was Grant at least. Um, this was pretty toxic. I didn't like this. You know, good stat line has tough, gets scout automatically because it's like McCultus archetype. You always give it scout with the equipment. You would just play it and it just felt very, very punishing to play against it. You know, it was very annoying. In fact, fish fight. Um, that's a big blow to Jack's Orn, I believe. And well, the dark and champions are gone. But like also to I guess it makes sense that it's a way, because you could equip Fiora and then use Fish Fight on it. Uh, which would be pretty strong, I'd imagine. So I'm glad it's a way, but also it's a bit sad for Orn decks. But at the same time, Orn is mostly played with Jax and that's kind of boring, you know? Petrosite Pillar was a funny card, because it destroys itself, doesn't get you anything for its destruction, but makes it so that all spells cost two more, uh, two more which could get, buy you a turn quite often. But it never saw play, really. It was a funny card, though. Um, this one was funny. But I don't think it was ever played much. Uh, Tailstone's gone. Fine. This one's huge. Petrocyte Broadwing was like, j you just played it in every Demacia deck. If you had access to Demacia, you just would play this, you know? D you don't even care about Formidable or whatever. You just play it because it's a fucking good unit. It's free damage with Challenger for two mana. Damn. Uh, makes sense. This into this. No, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, uh, this into this one was really fucking annoying. Um, but also, didn't see much play of this outside of formidables. Like, if you focus on formidables, you would play it probably, but most of the time it didn't matter, really. Honored Lord gone as well. Cataclysm gone, thank goodness. Uh, Battlefield Prowess, that's the spell I mentioned earlier with the one mana grant and ally, etc. If you would play with a Shell Shocker on turn one, and you would play that in uh, Scouts with uh, Bilgewater. 
And yeah, this one, I actually played this one a lot in the, um, the Masia, like it was basically mono the Masia with, um, the, uh, with uh, Jalvan and Garen. And I would play this in there because you would always be holding elite, which basically just all elites. And this would give, give them like, I think it gave like scout or challenger. I'm not sure anymore. Either way, I haven't played Elites in a while. But honestly, it being gone, I don't know, it didn't feel like super strong or anything like that. If if they made it a 1-1 one mana, one, one with this effect, maybe the Elite tech, I'd imagine it would be still pretty great. Um, I don't think it... Like, it's not played out of, outside of Elites because it has the Behold effect. I guess Behold doesn't make much sense in the Demacia. Um, region Pi. Javan's dad is gone as well. Not just Javan, but Javan's dad as well. Huh. But also didn't see him much in the game, you know? Which is, by the way, a buff for Clash of Ja. No, wait, this is not, this is not Titanic. Never mind. Ignore that. <laughs> Ignore that. It's not Titanic. So, Udio Sedge, Trinda, Shatter, it doesn't matter. Nobody played that. Uh, Unforgiving Cold played it in I think cultists played it, but cultists are basically rotated. Fraud's gone. Huh. Um interesting. I wonder what they'll do with Lysandra because I love playing Lysandra. Uh Hunting War, nobody cares. Cracking Ice. Um Frostbite me at the next run start. Was an interesting card to play sometimes, but most of the time it just didn't matter. You would just play any other card. Uh, this is pretty big for that Darius um, and Gnar deck, but Darius is rotated. You know, but this one being gone, you know, it harms Gnar and other overwhelm big unit decks, you know. Mammoth gone, it's fine. Bone Scryer gone, it's fine. Tusk Beaker is interesting. It makes sense that it's gone because of... Um, they probably don't want the plunder archetype to just go to, uh, like... Bilge Water and Frail Yacht and something like that. It makes sense, I guess. Frozen Thrall Landmark gone. That's a shame. Draculon gone as well. This one was such a cool card. I love the art and lore behind the Draculon Inquisitors. Um, it's a shame that it's gone. What are, gonna, what are they going to do with Lysandra? Because Lysandra is pretty, you know, Thrall centric, literally. Maybe I'll make it Titanic. Make a, oh, once you summoned X amount of Titanic units. I don't know. Obliterate a unit to summon a frozen tomb in place. In tomb, honestly, I never main decked it. It's gone. Free sisters gone. Succumb, doesn't matter. Nobody played that. Not even in Thralls, I don't think. But gone. Buried gone. This is big. Buried was so frustrating to play against. Uh, cold resistance. Honestly, I didn't play that whatsoever most of the time, unless I played for middle bolts with Freljord. And then sports of war. I like playing this, but also most of the time there was just better stuff. Like sky splitter does this basically plus one plus three. You know, it's like you don't need to proc a plunder. It's a little. It's a bit worse than what the plunder spores of war does, but sky splitter is just better. Ice quake, nobody played. Um, Spirit walker, I don't think many played that whatsoever. Fury of the North gone. Tusk raider gone. Makes sense since Sejuani is gone. You know, um, still f sh a shame because it was fun with Revna to activate plunder and then play this. And then use Revna to buff your deck further. Just big dudes. Very funny. Shared spoils. Like this one a lot as well. Shame to see it go. Battle Fury. Honestly, good riddance. This one was just a blowout most of the time. Warmovers. Also fun. You know, very cool card. But most of the time it was just very boring. You just play this and it's game over for the opponent most of the time, you know. With that in mind, that was that. Uh, Cloud Drinker, didn't really see it much played outside of like gem archetypes and rise. So, hey, you know, I won't miss it, but also 
it's not like I hate it or anything. Uh, this one, interesting. This is, it's a, it makes sense that it's gone because of Yasuo. Because it would basically be a nine mana kill three enemies or deal damage to six, uh, to three enemies or whatever. But also nobody played it ever. <laughs> Because a uh, nine mana seven six with quick attack, especially with Hey Show, it would be still pretty good though. Because the Hey Show reduces the cost a bunch, so you could use this just recall stuff, get a big unit on board. But big unit in Ionia never made much sense. Like they didn't have really all the big units. It was more frail, but you would be able to protect them quite a lot with spells that buff your units. Inside of Ages makes sense. Um, that it's gone because it was, you know, generation is bad. Um, Shaman Wind, I think they mean Vestian Disciple is gone because you can't main dick this, but I love that card. That was a very cool card with Vestian Disciple, even though it was elusive, because it recalls itself. So you wouldn't, when you played elusives, you wouldn't play Vestian Disciple to buff it or anything like that. Instead, you would play it for draw, or you play it for or Master E and stuff like that, you know? I wonder what Masai is going to be like now in this sort of meta, given that a lot of the cool cheap spells are gone. But hey, whatever. Uh, Shadow Fiend, it's fine. Black Flame, such a great, very fun card. It's a shame to see it go, but it makes sense because Black Flame with Hecarim especially would be pretty strong, I'd imagine. Um, the Maker, it's gone. This is a nerf for Jin, because I like playing the Maker in Jin, and the Maker was specifically made, like printed because of Jin. I think she's the one that made his mask or something, or his weapon. I don't know. Talston's gone. Um, I haven't seen this card ever. <laughs> Played nine lives. Liminal Guardian was pretty great. You know, you get basically a burst speed blocker in Ionia, which makes sort of sense, but also Liminal Guardian were kind of, you know this shit for quite a while and but aside from that you don't really play it outside of one deck maybe so it's whatever children of the forest was a pretty fun card call an ally or spend eight mana to summon an ephemeral copy of a three strongest followers you've recalled this game was a pretty fun idea especially with big dudes from like different regions if you got like other like i don't know i played this elder dragon <laughs> deck with recalls which was funny with like Ari and Elder Dragon. And I would basically summon um, Cloud Drakes and stuff. Which was pretty funny. Because it reduced everyone's cost. Uh, summon another ally gave me plus two this round. Coastal Defender was only really good in like swarm decks. But even then, not so much. Syncopation, Syncopation was a funny card. Sad to see it go. Uh, Shadow of the Past makes sense that it's gone with, like, uh, Zed gone. Um, create Sanctuary in hand. I don't remember what Sanctuary was. I also have never seen this card actually being played. Singular Will. Big. Um, but also never played. I don't think I've seen anyone ever play it. Uh, Flurry of Fists also haven't seen it really. But Scales of a Dragon, a lot of this with Master Yi in mind, you know, sad to see it go, actually. A lot of the cheap spells. Horns of a Dragon was never that great, because double attack doesn't do much unless you have Overwhelm. And you don't have access to Overwhelm in Ionia. So, double attack right there, you know. Um, unless you use Syncopation to make this block, uh, uh, to swap this with an elusive ally, like uh, the Vestine's Disciple, and you just swap them out, and this one attacks two times, so it attacks for eight, maybe even buffed up, you know? That was a fun combo, but it was gone. Concussive Palm gone is interesting, especially considering that Yasuo is back, but I guess we'll have to see what is getting back. Sonic Wave, good that it's gone. Green Glide Duo, oh, good riddance. Shadow Fiend, Shadow Blade, Ren, you know, whatever. Shadow Fiend gone, Ghost gone, fantastic. And Sun, Shadow Seer gone. Is an elusive ephemeral, you know. I don't like it. Uh, scaled Snapper. It's whatever. But yeah, that was Ionia. 
Uh, next up, honestly, Nox is probably going to be very easy, you know. Um, Gone is a Titanic unit. This is a slight nerf, I think, for the Clash of Giants, because I honestly liked it when I got this. Because it was, it has Overwhelm, and it has Challenger, it has a good stat line. You would just take it, pull out their biggest unit, or whatever, or their champion, and then attack with your other big beefy dudes. For the most part, you know, it was pretty fun. Whirling Death was a fun combat trick that Noxus had. Sad to see it go. Um, really, a bunch of these are just aggressive cards that were played with LeBlanc, so it makes sense that they're gone. Weapon Master, this is a nerf for Jax a little bit because it's actually a good unit. A cheap good unit as well, Furious Wielder. Honestly, it makes sense that it's gone because of Cultist, but also it's gone because, again, an equipped an equipped Fiora would probably be able to do a lot of damage with this. Like, you would, if you have Fiora in the game, you need to get a V Fiora check on every card, you know? Reveler's Feast gone is weird since Vladimir is coming back, but hey, it's whatever. Crimson Pension gone with support back and Vladimir back. Interesting. Disintegrate gone. Broad main. Fantastic. This was so annoying to play it. To uh, to deal with, you know. Uh, Nox and Telstone's gone. Rally gone. Reckoner gone. It was a fun card to play with, honestly. But, you know, it's whatever. Summon uh, Trifarian Glory Seekers. Gone. <laughs> Rally gone. Damage. Never played. When you target me, grant me plus one attack. I didn't know this one existed. Huh. What a fun idea. Like, this would have been probably pretty fun with, like, um, gems and Targon and stuff like that. Possibly. I wonder if that's an archetype, theoretically. But it's a shame to see it go, since it never got played, really. <laughs> Uh, Runeweaver gone makes sense with Riven. Wait, is that all of Reforge? No, 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 there's still last, the Challenger. I got rocks in my boots. Rocks in my boots. Something like that, I don't know. And uh, the last Breath unit, I believe, as well had like Reforge. That, those are still in the game? Why? Uh, your strongest ally and the weakest enemy strike each other. Noxtry Arena gone. Huh. Brutal Hunter. Never seen this card. Actually, ever. Uh, weapon Hilt gone. Makes sense. Reforge, you know. Sharpened Resolve. Basilisk. Was an interesting card, but it's just gone. Rarely. Makes sense because it's like, okay, it makes, it's a, it's a stun. Sure. But Apprehend was only good because of the Rally and Darius. If you didn't play Darius and if you liked it, you wouldn't play a two mana slow stun. Single target stun, no less, you know. Auroch was a fun card, actually. I like this one. Uh, Iron Ballista, gone. They really must want the Overwhelmers to be uh, away. City Breaker, gone. Makes sense because of, like, Plunder archetype. You've got Samira and Gangplank, theoretically, as a concept, you know. So City Breaker being gone makes a lot of sense. Would just turbo Gangplank, probably. Um... Or at least help you a little bit, even, like, when you don't get, like, all the plunder stuff, you know. Um, inspired plants, you know, randomness, not a fa uh, enough, you know. Explitterator gone is sad, but also Obliterate didn't really fit Pilled Over, in my opinion. Zondiva being gone is a buff for Clash of Giants, because this is a play effect and it didn't matter. Like, like, look, if you play a deck that doesn't run six plus, like, different spells or whatever, you know, Zondiva, you wouldn't be able to proc, you know? She was just an 8-5 that you would summon from Clash of Giants. Glad to see it gone. Violent Discord, whatever. Mushroom Clutch, you would never main deck anyways. Pursuit of Perfection was only good in Seraphine. This one's pretty huge. This one was like a draw card that you would just pack into every build of a deck most of the time, or any aggro deck. So, it's, seeing it gone is rough, you know? 
Um, elusive gone, I'm fine with that. Zevi gone is wild because it was a very fun car, genuinely. Um, it wasn't game winning or anything like that, but you would play it with like a bunch of printing and stuff like that, which is kind of cool. Gotcha gone was pretty fun. Like Gotcha was pretty great with like Jen and Hila, but um, you know, seeing it away, it makes sense. This was meant to be like a downside. And when drawn, I cost two less this round. Makes sense. Two mana deal three is pretty good. But uh, if you don't use it, you essentially end up with a fast spell four mana deal three, which at that point, you, you know, you could also just use two's uh, mystic shots to deal four instead, you know? So it's not a great four mana, but it is pretty great at two mana. And with updraft, you just got rid of the whole cost. Not to mention that if you updraft it and then draft it later, you know, it costs three, costs two less, so it costs one. One mana deal three at fast speed is pretty insane. And yeah, aftershock on is interesting because landmark removal. I take it that um, the other stuff is also, huh? Like seeing augment gone. Like there's not many augment cards. There's buffet, I guess. But aside from that. I don't know if there's any other augment cards left, you know, if this one's gone as well. Um, but whatever. Time Wonder was pretty good. Production Search was pretty good, but only really played in like tech decks or um, um, Nora or in Heimerdinger decks. You know, Nora Heimerdinger was also a deck that I really liked. Adaptatron, fun card uh, to play. Sad it's gone, but also like with tech gone, it makes sense that it's gone, you know? This was never played really, I don't think. Uh, Archivist was pretty great, in my opinion. Some Fumes was pretty great. Sad to see it go. Most Wanted is interesting. It was a very interesting card to play, especially in, like, Jinx decks, but also to get rid of, like... You know, if I played this with, like, Trixie Tentacles and Early Bird, so it would play, like, Trixie Tentacles to get rid of their lowest-cost card and do that over and over again. And the enemy would just end up with a lot of high cost cards and I would just make them get rid of those, but they would draw free cards. I also played Most Wanted sometimes in Mushroom decks, which is funny, but you know, whatever. Ferris uh, Sky Cruiser, honestly, it's just an elusive. 4 mana 4 4 most of the time, you know. Hexac Handler was pretty fun. I liked playing that. Hexac Anomaly was pretty zany. I'm sad that it's gone. The Telstone's gone means just no access. To, you need to play like Explorer spells now to get rid of uh, landmarks. Corsic Riff was pretty good, but also Flow in Pilled Over. There was not much support for Flow in Pilled Over. I wonder if Seraphine could have been a, a fun Flow champ, you know? Flow, music, you know, makes sense, right? Huh. High note. Um, seeing it gone as well, a lot less damage, you know? Zon Bouncer? I haven't seen really much flow support, you know? Like, I haven't seen many flow cards with that. Acorn! It's a shame, because I feel like this effect is pretty cool, not to mention that Acorn is pretty easy to deal with. And yeah. Crowd Pleaser. Gone. Especially with the RNG from flow. There's more flow cards in Zon than I thought, uh, like Piltover and Zon. Interesting, interesting. Uh, Scribe of Sorrows was a fun little thing. Like, I actually enjoyed this a lot. Uh, Rekindler Gone is a shame, but particularly with, like, um, Mordekaiser, this was pretty darn insane. It milk coffee. Like, this was pretty big. I really liked it. Shame it's gone. Shadow Isles had a lot of fun cards. Four Year Gone is a bit of a big deal for specific decks like Gwen. With any champion, <laughs> Gwen is just getting hit by this. I like Gwen, but shame, you know. Honestly, Four Year felt very annoying because you just got a blocker plus one for Hallowed, and then on the next turn, you would play this on your defensive turn. And on your next turn, when you got the attack tome, you get another one. And that's an elusive, uh, that's an ephemeral unit. So blocking it is already feels bad. But it would have, it's an ephemeral plus, uh, like, 2-1. And if you didn't have any, pro uh, 
prior to summoning this, if you didn't have any Hallowed stacks, it would just be a free one, you know? So you would need to block it at some point. You have to take a blow, and then eventually you get blown out completely, which is annoying. Out of Devastation, fair, with a lot of the Darken champions gone and stuff like that, you know, makes sense that it's gone, but also, it's basically a worse ruination. <laughs> uh, outside of Darken allies and equipped stuff, and you wouldn't play really equipments all that much in a um, Shadow Isle stack anyways. Uh, Shape of Fear was a fun card, sad it's gone, um, Telstone's gone, Vora gone, is pretty big actually. Damn. 3 mana, 3-2. Three, when I'm summoned, summon a random husk. Why did they remove it? Like, Evelyn's still in the game, right? Whatever. Catalog was pretty funny, but not great. Watch of VR didn't feel great. I played this in darkness sometimes. Um, Ixtali Sentinel was pretty great in darkness. I guess it makes sense that, you know, darkness, darkness was a great lifestyle unit. There's no lifestyle now in Thingy Magic and Shadow Isles unless you play Eternal. Uh, darkness, basically darkness. You know, I played this also in like darkness sometimes, you know, when I played specific kill decks with like Kindred and Vega, which by the way were never great. It just felt weird, but I tried it, you know. Uh, darkness, kill, grant me stats and keywords was pretty fun. I liked Mask Mother. Shame it's gone. Spirit Leech, I liked it as well, but I guess I can see why it's gone, you know. Viper Worm, I haven't really seen it much. But Fury and the Dragon in Shadow Isles was pretty cool. I liked that a lot. Uh, this card I loved. This was a funny card to use. Shame it's gone. There's more landmark removal gone. Why? You know, I just you basically just have to play either either they nerf some of the great landmarks, or they essentially uh, either they nerf uh, like I don't know like t a sunken temple, or they just add more landmark removal. I don't know why. Like, uh, Explorers are in, now have to be in every deck, I guess. Unless you just don't want to deal with the enemy uh, landmarks whatsoever. Um, I'm not a fan of that. I like it when you go to specific regions specifically for landmark removal. I was not a fan of, like, the Explorers. But I like the versatility that they offer, you know? Uh, Nightfall gone, that's fair. Uh, Passage Unearned had such an amazing animation, but it was just never played, I don't think. You know, Sap Magic, fair. Didn't really see it played much. Sapling Toss, it was a weird card to use, but honestly, it was kind of funny at the same time, you know? Undying Gone, oh, that's a shame. Because, like, it's a, it can get pretty big, but it can be silenced, it can be obliterated, and it doesn't have Overwhelm. In just, um, you know. So, I'm sad that it's gone, you know. Like, Nasus is still in the game, so... What happens to Fastigate? Like, Fastigate is no longer a thing. How do we play, like, Nasus now? It's just gonna be a Slay archetype. Maybe with, with um... Mordekaiser, possibly? I don't know. Miss Call, revive a random ally that died this round. Liked it a lot for the purpose of printing stuff. Can I like to summon a random follow that costs two more? It was pretty zany and funny at the same time, you know, I really like that. And that was Shadow Arts. Shadow Arts was hit pretty big, in my opinion. Um, Shurima. Uh, Lurk Gone, Predict Gone. This is big because it was not essentially every deck. Even if you didn't play Equipment or Darken, you would still play the Forsaken Bakai because it's a one-man, two-one in Shurima with Predict. Guarantees to draw something good next turn, you know? I like this card, you know, and you have the upside of possibly getting plus one plus one if you just run one dark in equipment or whatever, you know? Either way, man, it's gone. The heck? Uh, didn't really see this. 
didn't see this played much, you know. Auto Flood, also didn't see it played much. Makes sense that with like Dark and Champions rotated, you know, they would do this. The equipment seemed to be stay though. Swinging Life gone is amazing, especially since Civi is coming back. Rock by Shepard was pretty fun, but seeing it gone is kind of weird. It will make Shurima a lot worse. Like, if you play Mono Shurima, like, Renekton is gone, so what do you play now? I guess you play... Nasus, Azir... Maybe, an, like, Sivy or something like that, but you don't have, like, any other... I don't... I don't think Zeref is back, so... I don't see, like, Mono Sharima being great. Like, you would just play Azir and Nasus, I guess. Nasus. With Rock Bear. Uh, Praises of There's a Light, gone. That's a shame. I really like this card because it's so meme you know. Dexter summon it instead. Was pretty cool to get some cheap ish A soul or whatever, you know. Um, didn't see much play. Obelisk of Power was pretty cool, but also didn't see much play, especially since Ziggs and Talia are rotated still. I'm sad that Dodos didn't make it back. If you level up champion, heal your champion and, and, and Nexus 2 at round start. Honestly, in Shurima, didn't feel like it, it really fitted the game, you know? This is rotated. So it's going to make, like, Ascendance, Ascendance Rise, basically not playing that anymore, not being able to play it anymore, means that isn't Mono Shurima just dead? Like, Mono Ascendance Shurima? I don't know. Summon a sandstone charger. Waking sands, gone. Um, gone, gone. Action package, you know. Right of dominance, it's whatever. Lurk gone, promising future. Was pretty funny. I liked it a lot. Sad it's gone. Um, sand soldiers, sand soldiers, lurk. I don't see why they're removing a lot of sand soldier stuff, but it's what it is. Lurk, Lurk, uh, Voice of Arisen was toxic. And there we go, that was Shurima. And then, uh, Targon. Diana, Yumi, Pantheon, Kale. I don't get what Kale is going on. Weapon Master is a nerf for Jax on. Um, this was funny for hand buffs and Revna. Sad it's gone. This... Elusive, don't care. Divine Cloak was annoying. Lunari Cultist was pretty fun, actually. So, it's a shame to see it gone. Draconic Bond! Bands! Man, I was excited to play a Draconic Yasuo deck. <laughs> I guess it never got played or anything, but it would have been funny. Zolani gone. Makes sense with Hecarim coming back. Um, this didn't see much play. It's just such a it's such a cool idea though. I love it, but it's gone. You know, uh, Esmus gone makes sense with Bart gone. You know, um, but support is back, so I don't get why this one had to leave. Asmus is such a fun card after all. Uh, give other allies plus two plus one and overwhelm this round. Nightfall. You know, it makes sense that Nightfall is rotated, but Aphelia is back, so I don't get why they did that. Telstone's gone, Vortex gone, Yulia gone, Campo, such a cool effect as well, never got used, <laughs> never got used actually, uh, all that much, you know, I use it sometimes, but whatever, Fated, makes sense, and um, Thingy Magic is gone, Pantheon, Shield World was pretty fun, Heaven's Align was really good for um, proccing Nightfall, but also for... Um, you know, with Diana gone, the Celestians will be unplayable. Like, you won't be able to play Leona Diana anymore, right? Instead, you'll just play Leona with uh, something else, I guess. Maybe with Aphelios. Maybe that could be kind of funny, but I don't think it's viable. Especially given that Aphelios is like Nightfall and you would have to proc Nightfall or reduce... Whatever. Either way, Heaven's Alliance gone is sad. Um, yeah. Nightfall, Nightfall, Nightfall. Why is Aphelios back if Nightfall's getting rotated, basically? Um, this one's a funny one. 
I liked it a little bit because nobody expects you to play it, but it's actually quite bad, you know? Giving something to hell for two mana seems pretty bad. I don't know. Uh, Nightfall. This one was really rough. Especially in that, uh, I think it was Noct and Diana deck that was popular for a while. Um, this one, honestly, with the, um, what is it, two mana, one four that heals itself and your Nexus one every round. I never felt the need to play Resplendent and Stellarcon again to stall. Uh, Zenith gone. Zenith gone. Damn. But that's like Daybreak. <laughs> uh, Astral Protection. Heal in LA4 and Granted 04. That's a shame. That was a cool card. Um, elusive Gone. <laughs> elusive Nightfall. And that's all. Yeah. Anyhow. I'll leave it at that because it's an hour. It's been an hour. If you like this, let me know uh, what your thoughts are on the cards that got rotated out. Uh, do you think they removed too many fun cards? I feel like they removed a bunch of fun ones, you know, that didn't see much play but are interesting as concepts. I wish they had not removed a lot of them. Mm. Love to see buffs to Clash of Giants there because Clash of Giants is such a fun little thing. But uh, yeah, I'll be seeing you next time. I will probably record uh, the other half of this uh, later. Yeah, sneak peek. There we go. Uh, this is going to come live. The change is going to come live in like eight days now. Like uh, the 24th, I believe. So next week on Wednesday. So look out for that. And I'll be excited to see what's going to get rotated in. Um, Bye bye.